Hi everyone and welcome back to Walk and Talk on Onco Daily. My name is Tatev Markaria and I'm your host as always. Today we have Dr. Julie Grello as our guest. Dr. Grello, can you please introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Julie Grello. I'm the Chief Medical Officer at ASCO, the American Society of Clinical Oncology. Okay, wonderful, thank you. Dr. Grello, so we're going to take a little walk in this beautiful scenery. Isn't it gorgeous? Yeah, is it, go it is gorgeous. And I'm going to ask you a couple of personal, silly, sure. maybe even deep questions. Okay. okay now let's get I'm started. Ready. Let's get I'm started. Ready. We're going to start with something deep then. Okay. What's the purpose of your life? What do you think? Yours and in general. That is deep. It uh, is deep. I think, you know, the older I get, my purpose changes a little bit. Uh -huh. But at this point in my life, my purpose is to make sure that the next generations are trained, they're ready to take my place in oncology, they're ready to improve the world. So supporting uh -huh. you know, the next generation, that's the purpose of my life right now. It's so interesting because a lot of other doctors and professionals that we have interviewed, I have interviewed, have the same answer. Good. This is the same answer to a couple of very different questions. So it's nice to know that you all have this aim of preparing the next generation for the greatest good. So we're all ready for what is coming. You're ready to take it on? <laughs> yes, we are. Great. <laughs> Thank you. So next up is, what do you think the greatest challenge that is facing humanity, humans at the moment is? I think it's really all of the inequities and disparities that exist around the world in so many ways. Mm -hmm. Obviously, as the chief medical officer at ASCO, I'm looking at cancer care disparities, but we have disparities Everywhere. in so many ways in everything, access to housing and food and education and healthcare. But in oncology, even though we know so many things work, mm -hmm. we have such inequities in getting access to those treatments in the US and internationally. Everywhere. Everywhere. Right? So how can we help? the world how what can we do to sort of make a change on the maybe on a personal level i know there's lots of stuff we can do on an organizational level right for example ask do is his thing cancer centers are doing their thing what about personal well i think my contributions and my way of trying to understand how i can best help is to actually get out there and visit the world uh, and i've never been afraid since starting my career and if I get invited to a conference or a meeting somewhere in the world, I will go there and I'll interact with the oncologists, the cancer patients in that place and understand them, mm -hmm. build personal relationships and trust. That takes a long time. Oh, sometimes. that's such an interest, important thing, right? Networking Absolutely. and building that like personal and professional community. That's right. Absolutely. So you travel a lot. I travel a lot. And but I think it's critical because you, <laughs> if you understand where people are coming from and you understand that 99.9% .9 of what we all want is the mm -hmm. same. Yes, that's know, true. That's then, exactly the same. Then we're going to be better able to help each other, right? I think we need better communication because yep. we all need and want the same thing. Right. And if we have better communication, I think we can get there sooner. In partnership, in yes, collaboration. Yes, absolutely. Yep. <laughs> Yep. So you like traveling a lot or you do travel a lot. What's the best recommendation you have for a place to visit? Oh, well, I have to say Yerevan, <gasps> don't I? Really? Yeah. No, you don't have to. <laughs> you have to visit. Well, I've been there here. twice and I love it. <laughs> the food and the people. Yeah, the food and, is great. That's yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I started my global oncology work in Eastern Europe, Central Asia, mm -hmm. you know, with the Ukraine Breast Cancer Assistance yes. Project. So I've been in that your region of the world so, for so much. And <laughs> I just really love the culture, the people. You know, you're so hospitable. Yeah, like, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so I would have to say, I, I, and you know, it's not Yerevan, but it's Tbilisi. I, when I had some friends who said, let's go on a vacation together, take us somewhere we would never go otherwise. <laughs> We went to Georgia. Oh, I love Tbilisi. Georgia. I know. So there you go. They also have great food. Oh my gosh. And great wine. Yes. Oh, that's <laughs> true. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, 
What are you most hopeful for? Well, you know, the this 60th ASCO annual meeting is just drawing to a close. Yeah. I saw so much hope. I really did. I saw, you know, not just promising, exciting new therapies, but also a real focus on quality of life and survivorship, on how we're going to use artificial intelligence and technology. There was a lot of AI. Yep. Uh, and year, I right? think that's going to help overcome some of the disparities and the inequities. I do. Um, so I, I have a lot of hope that not only do we have a lot of exciting new treatments, precision mm -hmm. medicine, targeted drugs, immunotherapy, but we have more kind of precision risk reduction, prevention, screening, etc. as well. So I think the strategy of, you know, reducing risk, finding it early, and then better treatments and then better survivorship uh -huh. or palliative care. I think we had examples of all of that at the annual meeting. I have a lot of hope um, that that we are really making a dent now. We are really working toward that goal of reducing the incidence as well as the mortality from cancer. And you think AI is helping us in that? Well, so here's an example of a great abstract that was presented at this meeting that we put uh -huh. in the press program. So these were inner city New York, patients who had been recommended to have colon cancer screening, had a colonoscopy scheduled, uh -huh. and then missed the appointment. And they used a bot, um, an AI bot named My Eleanor, and she called <laughs> these people. And, and reminded them? Well, she didn't just remind them. She interacted with them. And I've seen transcripts and heard the interaction. And so in a very personalized way, you know, she would say, what are your barriers? How can I help? And if they said, well, I don't understand why I need it, she would be able to answer. If they said, I'm worried about the cost, I'm worried about what if there's an abnormal finding, mm -hmm. you know, all of these things, she was able to give very personalized answers back and there was a back and forth. And I think some of the patients asked questions you know, it's a colonoscopy, right? It's a little bit embarrassing. There's well, yes, yeah, so of course. Not everyone knows that. No, right? and I think some patients asked, some of these people asked questions that they never would have asked a human, probably, because they would have been embarrassed. Yes, that's true. And she spoke Spanish, too, by oh. the way. So we can teach her so how to interact. Bilingual. Yeah. <laughs> so we're looking at, well, could we do it in other languages? Could we do it for screening mammography or for lung cancer screening? Uh -huh. I mean, that's just one simple way of showing how we can harness technology for the good that's true. and get more people in for cancer screening. Yeah, I think it, it, ha it has a long way to go, but it has already come so far. Well, we're here. We're in the middle of AI, right? Yes, we are. And we've got to harness it for the good. If, yes. we, if we don't step in and take control, it will go off in uh, a direction we don't yeah, like. And right? maybe someday we'll be controlled by robots. Hopefully that will not Hopefully happen. Hopefully not. <laughs> well, uh, I heard someone in a plenary recently say, Oncologists won't be replaced by AI, but oncologists who embrace AI will replace oncologists who don't. Oh, now that's wise. There you go. I do feel that that's yeah. wise. Okay, that was very elaborative. I love it. And um, can you tell me like one example of a significant change that you have made in your life that you are really proud of, that you are not disappointed by? Well, so I would say off the top of my head, when I was growing up, um, you know, in, in school, I was not very athletic. It was, I mean, it was decades <laughs> ago. It was not when we had so much organized sports, especially for girls. And in college, you know, I didn't do much in the way of organized sports. It was just my family didn't. Uh -huh. It wasn't the era, right? Okay. And then when I um, was doing my fellowship, in oncology and I started specializing in breast cancer, uh -huh. um, my patients started asking me to help them get fit, fit in their life. So we started a group called Team Survivor Northwest to get exercise and fitness in the lives of women cancer patients. And so I started by doing a triathlon with them. And then we said, we have to figure out a way for everybody, no matter what their ability is, mm -hmm. to get some, to set goals, yes. that was a key, set a goal, and then get some fitness in their life. One of my patients, her goal was to be able to push her wheelchair around the block. Uh, you know, so it didn't have to be a big goal. So with that, I started running. I've done marathons. Really, I've, you I've have. climbed mountains. 
I mean, I got really hooked on this, I and think. I did a lot of it with patients. <laughs> For my 50th birthday, I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. Oh, wow. I've been to Everest Base Camp with the fundraiser. That's a for cancer. So that's a change I made that, one, I wanted to do it with my patients, showed them I really believed in the importance of exercise. But then it kind of lit a fire in me, and I got so excited. For my 60th birthday, we went <laughs> trekking in Bhutan. You know? That's so nice. So that is a change I made that's really been able to show patients I believe in this and it's important and you can do it too right I, I think you have inspired so many patients of <laughs> yours to this because you just inspired me I do love hiking yeah but I think I've been doing too little of it maybe I should I should restart set it. a goal push yeah. yourself a little bit I will yeah. I definitely will yeah so thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview with me and thank you everyone for watching our walk and talks we had dr. Julie Grella was our guest for today and yeah, stay tuned for future walk and talks. See ya. <laughs> Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.